Welcome to today's video. Today's video, we're looking at what's going to happen to the Renault Zoe. There's some news about the Q motor, and also there's a new Zoe coming with something that's going to replace the Q. And today we're going to be going straight into that and what it means. Renault recently announced that they are no longer taking orders for the Q motor. Now the Q motor is the one that will charge up to 43 kilowatt hours. So that means that if you want to buy a Zoe today, a new order, you can no longer order the Q model that will allow the faster charging. You can only buy the R model, which is max charge speed is 22 kilowatts. Just to clarify, you can plug the R model into a 43 kilowatt AC charger and it will take a charge. It will just max out at 22 kilowatts. Now, the dropping of this high power, faster charging motor does obviously bring some great news. Not some great news in the short period, but the long period, it means that Renault are moving towards getting ready for the long awaited CCS version of the Zoe, which moves us very neatly into our second story. And that is, there's a new Zoe coming. The new Zoe has been spied by other people before, and I've done videos about it being spied. However, we now have a proper artistic image of what it's gonna look like, some pictures of the interior dash, etc. Now let's, let's start on the main points. Number one, we know it's gonna have CCS. Eric has confirmed that it's gonna have up to 100 kilowatt CCS. This kind of does tell us a little bit of information about the battery. That kind of indicates that it's going to be a 50 kilowatt, 60 kilowatt battery to take 100 kilowatt uh, hour speed. Or we might mean it can plug into a 100 kilowatt charging station like Hyundai Kia always advertised, which realistically means it can only take 80 kilowatt. But it does mean that we're kind of going to see a bigger battery, maybe 50, 60 kilowatts. The also He's also said that it's going to keep the 22 kilowatt charging speed, which is great news. If you go around Europe, there's lots of free phase chargers that work at 22 kilowatt AC. And that means that these charging stations will still be able to use by the Zoe, which this will make the Zoe probably one of the most versatile charging electric cars on the market because it will be able to charge from uh, AC free phase power at 22 kilowatts and 100 CCS DC charging. That that's just opens up so many possibilities for the Zoe. And I think that it will really push Zoe and Renault's uh, product of it above everyone else. Even the uh, Teslas with the dual motor charger only got up to 22 and they don't make that anymore. So most Teslas can only charge 11 kilowatt AC and pretty much all the other electric cars don't really charge past 11 kilowatt AC. So Zoe will win on this. So well done Renault for keeping that part of the thing. Now, the other parts to move on to is, is CCS, This is now this is a pure guess of me, is CCS going to be an option to add on? Like BMW used to do in the past with DC, is it going to be an option to add CCS onto a Zoe? Is it gonna come standard with 22 kilowatt AC R motor? And then if you want CCS, that's an additional extra charge. This would, need into Renault keeping a low price on the Zoe with CCS being an optional extra if you need it. And that means that they, Zoe could get away with this because it is classed as a town car because of its size. So if you're only going to drive it around the town, 22 kilowatt charging is absolutely adequate. If you're going to be going long distances, then you'll want to add the CCS option. This is pure speculation. It might all come with CCS, but I, I suspect if they're going to go a bigger battery, and add CCS, that's adding an extra layer of cost to the Renault that we've not seen before. And to make up for this cost, they're going to have to be a little bit inventive with pricing, etc. Now, they've also added some interior changes. If you look at the center console, it's now going to have a big center console dash where you sat nav and all your infotainment information actually in the front of the driver's dash, a bit like uh, Audi's system heads up, uh, not heads up display, I can't remember what Audi call it now. I think they call it driving mode or something like that. It's a uh, oh, cockpit mode. They call it co-pilot or something like that, which is all the infotainment in front of the driver's dash. I think it's still going to have a center sat nav dash as well. I'll, in fact, probably going to just go and check that. Yeah, check that. Couldn't find anything else about that. <laughs> but it's going to have the center console dash with all your sat nav, which will make it neat. I assume it's going to have another dash in the middle, but 
I don't know. Technically, they wouldn't need it if it's all in the driver's cockpit. There's no really reason for the passenger to sort of see your sat nav stuff, but I, I imagine it will have a center one for a touch screen for easy, uh, easy use and easy sort of navigation. Because if you're having it there in front of your face, it's not really ideal to touch it if you've got a steering wheel where you can hit your hand out of the way. So I imagine it will still have a center dash as well. It's of course gonna have some other features. I'll put a link to the article down below in the in the comment section, the description comment section. It's all in French. If you've got Google Chrome, it will translate the page for you. French doesn't translate great to English, as many Renault Zoe owners already know. <laughs> but thanks very much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to uh, check out my other videos and consider becoming a patron. Don't forget to subscribe, by the way. If you're not a subscriber already, please click the subscribe button. Thanks very much. See you again next week. Goodbye.